In this video, we'll be adding a second data feed to our existing feed handler. And to do this, we'll extend feed.queue by adding another second row. Before we do this, let's take a look at what this script does now in a bit more detail. And in the first line, we see a hopen command to our ordb process. Now hopen is a powerful tool in our KDB toolkit that allows us to talk between different queue processes, like I've mentioned before, that's called inter-process communication or IPC for short. Now on the next line here, we're doing a few different things at once. So let's break it down, starting with what's inside the innermost brackets first. Now this code is simply generating some data for us. So the first bit is making use of the inbuilt function .z.n, which returns system time in KDB. So let's run this in a new queue window over here. .z.n gives us system time and to take in front of it gives us two results back of the same thing. So that's just a quick way we can get two of our system times back. Next, we have a similar thing, but instead of getting two system times back, we want to generate two random symbols from a specified list. Now in KDB, a symbol is a fundamental data type that represents a textual or symbolic element. Now symbols are often used to label or identify other data in a database that's not numeric. Now we do have another textual data type called strings, Again, I'll link the courses below that talk about the difference, differences between strings and symbols and when you should use which. Uh, but in our case, we're going to use symbols and we're going to use the question mark with this one because we want the result returned to be random. So if we do two, I said question mark, yep. And we do Apple and Microsoft and what else do we have? Amazon. You can see we get two back and we're getting a different two back the next time. So if we had used hash like we did with system time, we get the first two results back every single time we run that. So this is a very quick and handy operator for creating random data. And we're going to use it for our last two columns again. For the next one, we're creating random float numbers. So again, two question mark. And if we had 10F, that would give us two float numbers between zero and 10. And if we move that to 100, it would give us two results between zero and 100. So you can see that's setting the range. Um, on the right hand side of the question mark. And then you can probably see a pattern now here as the last one looks very similar. Again, we're asking for two symbols back, this time either from B or S, which is representing that the trade has a buy or a sell side in our data. Now putting that all together, we're generating a data set that can be added to our trade table. And we're gonna do that using the u.upd function. So I can run this whole entire thing just inside the first round brackets, and you'll see I get all that data back together. Now this u.upd function takes two parameters, the first one being the name of the table, which in our case is trade, and the second one being this data in list format. Now to learn more about .u.upd, we do see it's defined in the tick.q script, and it's triggered whenever the feed handler publishes data to the ticker plant. Now this function, can behave differently based on whether a timer is set with it or not. And this is the difference between configuring either batch publishing mode or real-time publishing mode, otherwise known as tick mode. And batch mode is where the incoming data is accumulating. So either for a specified duration or until a predefined number of records are reached before releasing it in batches. Whereas tick mode instantly broadcasts data as soon as it comes. Now, just to say at this point, the code in tick.q can be overwhelming for newcomers. So we haven't gone into it in detail here, but we do have links to all the documentation, white papers and helpful blogs that explain that in more detail. Now for this course, we're gonna use batch mode. So that means we need to set the timer alongside our UPD function. And we're using our dummy feed here and are gonna set our duration to be one second or every 1000 milliseconds. So we need to do two things to set that timer. The first thing is to find the thing we want to run on the timer, which is, everything on line four into this .z.ts function, which is the timer function in KDB. And that means at the interval we set, this function is gonna run. And the interval is set on the next line with the system T command. And that 1000 is 1000 milliseconds or one second. So that is how we're generating our dummy data and how we're sending it every interval of one second to our ticker plant. So hopefully now we have a better understanding of what's happening in here. So let's build up our dummy data for the second table, the quote table. 
So taking a look back to sim, the sim.q file, we can see we've got six columns instead of four. So we're going to need to create data for six rows. So we're going to just add a semicolon in here, which denotes I want to start a second line of code. And then we're going to put in our dummy data generation for the quote table. So it's very similar to the trade table, except at the end, we're asking for two integer columns instead of floats, because that's what our bid size and ask size column are set in the schema. So again, having the same data types match from your data to your schema is really important. So that's it. Our quote data is now ready to send to the ticker plant. Now, I know I introduced a lot of new concepts, particularly in the Q language at a high level here, but we are going to have links to all the relevant academy courses and documentation where you can learn more about each of these. So now we have our quote table ready to go. We're going to, in the next video, automate the feed handler to start publishing this new data set.